Welcome to the Film Junket Podcast. Oh man! See, I think I need a, I think I need a new theme song. Somebody else needs to do it. What's happening, guys? Dave, the film junkie here. Welcome to the film junket podcast. Thank you for clicking in and listening to the madness that is this podcast. Um, I, I appreciate you guys, of course, subscribing, doing all that stuff. Make sure you follow me on all the uh, sock meds out there, the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Hit me up on Twitter if you want to ask a question. During the podcast, just hashtag film junket podcast. And today I have a special guest. Oh my God. There we go. Um, he's been on the vodka stream, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit more intimately. We're going to get a little intimate here, guys. Uh, a little, bit, <laughs> little romantic. Hopefully, he lit up some candles, you know, oh. <laughs> put on some Lionel Richie, maybe. I don't know. But I'm um, here with Eric Blake, Mr. Hard Boiled Films himself. What's going on, Eric? How you doing? How you doing? But um, Lionel Richie, please. Hey, I, I, you know why? I'm just thinking please. of forty old virgin, forty old virgin. Please, please, I please. I'm for Perry. <laughs> I'm for Barry White. How about okay, that? Okay, okay. Hey, if you want to, you like that deep voice? That's fine. That I heard people yeah. say. <laughs> that's a good impression of Barry. Oh, jeez, that's pretty good. I mean, this guy, man, there was something about that guy's voice. I mean, he was just he was a big dude. Uh-oh. Big dude, and I mean, he just stood up there and just said all the right things, and panties dropped. <laughs> oh man! In the nineties, oh man, jeez, eighties, nineties. Yeah, this intro was totally a hundred percent not gay. We have fulfilled all our legal obligations. You, you draw your own conclusions. We good? <laughs> yeah, we're good. Uh, yeah, he's a crowder watcher. I like. I love it. I love it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, how's it going, man? Go ahead and promote yourself. Talk about it. Whatever. Where, where you're at on Twitter and all that stuff. Well, um, as uh, most of you have been who uh, follow Film Junkie probably know by now, I am Eric M. Blake. Um, you know me on YouTube as Hard Boiled Entertainment, and you know me on Twitter at Hard Boiled Films. And you may or may not know me as uh, one of the uh, runners and movers and shakers over at Project Comic Con. Oh, yes, mm-hmm. maybe we should talk about that a little bit since Comic Con has started today. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, you so, know, I can't uh, tell yeah, you. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's just dive right yeah. into it since you mentioned it already. Um, I actually wanted to uh, let's let's just start from the beginning. Um, is this your baby? This your baby? You're the one that came up with the idea, or was it like a? I mean, whose idea initially was it to like do the Project Comic Con thing? Well, it's funny because it almost depends on who you ask, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I only say that because look, as far as I'm concerned, the um the the idea as it as it is for this project itself is mine, but. Of obviously, like it was inspired by pre by the thing uh, by previous events. Like yeah. um, obviously the uh, nerd the um, the nerd queens' project, like the their effort last year, like when they were selling the shirts at Comic Con, all that. Obviously, that was a major in that was a major influence because, like, hey, you know, I, and that was a major reason I brought them and Mick D on was like, hey, you know. They were the only they were the only folks like they and their friends like they were the only ones that actually did something last Comic Con for our yeah, movement. I and remember that. Like, and it was like I Heart Zax Z I Heart Z. Yeah, it know, was good. that shirt that was like running <laughs> strong through Comic Con yeah. last year. Yeah. Although the inspiration for my for my baby right now the the real big one really was Char, was uh, Charlie's airborne banner over Warner uh, that flew past Warner Brothers that Zack Snyder saw it sit, and he did that video that is yeah. caring all that good stuff. But uh, really, it was my it was, it was it, the big spiritual inspiration for this was mainly due to the fact that last year was just such a letdown for us. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. especially with all the hype and seriously. 
anyone who's getting on your case over how dare you kill the hype last year. I mean, seriously, are you, these people, are, are they seriously saying that they liked what happened in the aftermath, all the bickering, all the anger over the fact that nothing happened, all the, bl all the blame being thrown around all the, you know, what should we have done? What shouldn't we have done? It's your fault, my fault and all that stuff. Are you, are they saying that they liked what happened, that they preferred that to maybe, I don't know, stealing ourselves for the fact that it may not happen and, you know, preparing and organizing accordingly. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, last year was, it was interesting. Yeah. It was very interesting because, I mean, there was conflicting information going all over the place, you know. Um, I, when, when, when Snyder posted that image where he was just like across the water, I went, huh. And <laughs> that's when I reached out to my guy. And I say, yeah. hey, what's going here? Yeah, no, that's what I call him now, because uh, source yeah. is a four-letter word now. Um, yeah. I said, like, hey, is uh, what's going on here? Is he is he gonna be there? What's going on? And then he was even going, yeah, that's weird. It's maybe I don't know, but no, as far as I could tell, he's not gonna be there. There's no word on an announcement. This, that, and this. So that's when I went. Um, I'm not hearing that he's gonna be there, guys. I mean. Yeah. I mean, it all the information came. I don't. I don't even know. Like, was the information was from Fiona, right? Um, yes and no. I mean, okay, it was. Well, both. There's this. There's that guy that showed up on uh, Chris Wong Swenson's uh, YouTube. Oh channel. yeah, that guy. That guy. Yeah, but, yeah. Now here's. The, yeah, but but it, but and I, and when he gave the excuse that it, they were supposed to, but then they pulled it at the last second. I was like, oh yeah, likely story. Bullshit. But. But then, um, but then uh, Fiona said something similar like months later. It's like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Now, here's the thing. Because Fiona said it, I'm not entirely – I'm not inc exactly inclined to dismiss it. I I'm just, no, no, no. It, yeah. I totally agree with you. I even said that too. I'm like, maybe she was told that. you know, And, I, and that's what I said in like videos and podcasts. I was like, maybe she was told that. I'm not calling her a liar by no stop. means. Of course yeah. not. And no, yeah. no one is. And, and but the thing is, though, um, regardless of whether or not that's what Warner Brothers had planned to do that, but the last second pulled out because Emmerich or whatever, regardless of that, the simple fact of the matter is, and I, as, as I was piecing together everything, I was like, look, regardless of whether or not we have reason to expect Warner Brothers announcing the Snyder Cut at Comic-Con or not, it's still a good idea for us to uh, do something big. And, yeah. you know, and if best case scenario, they announced it at Comic-Con, well, at least we still we still did something epic. It was like an epic lead into it. But at the very least, but we should not go in there expecting, expect, prepare, expecting the best and then using that as an excuse to slack off. Mm -hmm. Like the old adage, uh, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst and make turn that worst, if you will, into something great, regardless. Yes, yeah, I agree. And that's why I'm actually uh, that's why I'm digging what's going on this year is everybody mm. is working like extra hard. I mean, the, the billboard is up. The bus stop is up. Obviously, there's going to be a flyover for, you know, on Friday. And I love the fact that that's all happening, but nobody's expecting Snyder to show up. Nobody's expecting an announcement. Everybody's just like, "Hey, let's get some feet on the ground. Let's get some boots on the ground, and let's just let's just do it. Let's just let's just you know raise yeah. raise the money. Half of it goes to the AFSP, which is great. Yes. And yes. and I think that's that's why this year is going to be a yeah. little different. This where this year everybody's knowing that there's not going to be anything, no announcement, no nothing. Snyder started his new film what yesterday, the day before. He's not going to be there, but we're, there's there's just a bigger presence now. I mean, yeah. it's it's all over, and it's making the rounds. That's why I did that video. Yeah. I'm like, it's making the rounds on sites. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah, there's the the the, the assholes that want to fucking discredit it and everything. And I just say, ignore those guys. It's not for them. Deborah tweeted out or not? She went on Vero, posted that sh screenshot of what what what's going on with all the campaigns, and they're grateful. That's all that matters. Yeah. And, and you know, I know it's funny. Um, 
as as far as um as far I, I it, was, it was so interesting because when the announcement came out that Warner Brothers was not going to be at Hall H, mm-hmm. there was a widespread concern in yeah. pr- the Project Comic Con crew and outside that oh geez did this just make Project Comic Con useless? Yeah, but and and I remember yeah. like I and and I, and, and I told the crew hey guys guys this was not about the, like project comic con was not about a uh, preparing for warner brothers to make some kind of announcement at hall h yeah this it wasn't not, about, that's how it's about bombarding hall h or anything no, no. I mean, it, that could have been part of it yeah yeah and it would have been it would have been like a great bone and it would have been a great great if uh well bonus if you know warner brothers and you know warner brothers is still going to be there yeah. Just at a booth, not at Hall H. Exactly. Nothing but, wrong with that. Yeah. And, but but really, Project Comic Con's like its agenda. It has always been a um, looking big, like making a big bold statement for everyone to see and no one to miss that mm-hmm. we are here. We are not going away, and you will not ignore us, and you will not dismiss us. We are to be taken seriously, whether you like it or not. And lo and behold, we've already succeeded. Look, we have Yahoo, Business Insider, Washington Post, Time Magazine, and now apparently the uh, the uh, like the, the Hollywood Reporter, of course. Like, and, and as I said, that one um, vodka. As I was saying in the chats, one of the vodka streams, like when we were arranging for the Hollywood Reporter ad, like Hollywood Reporter's like. Like we were like alert and the Hollywood Report was like looking at us as we were talking with them. And it was like, huh, oh, you know, this is very interesting. Yeah. So as I said, look, they did not tell us, they did not um actually tell us anything about, hey, we'll, we'll contact you later. But as I said, don't don't be surprised if Hollywood Reporter does something in the future. Cause like I was I was like, you know, it looks like this could grow into something more. And um uh I and the, there's some other big name papers that may or may not be reporting on us very soon. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Oh, brace yourselves, people. Yeah, absolutely. See? I mean, I mean, and that's, you know, and that's what's what's great about it. You're making noise and you're making the right noise. You know, it's yeah. not, yeah. you know, if, uh, screw whatever, you know, somebody from Collider says or whatever the hell. I mean, it's just, it's, you just ignore it. It's not yeah. about that. It's not about, you know, dogpiling on somebody who's like trying to discredit. Just, just, just let it be. Me. They're going to do that. Just let it be. Yeah. yeah. For me, for me, the thing about Dennis is I, I'm just more saddened than anything yeah. else because I used to really respect Dennis. Zach. I remember you said like, that in my mentions earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Like I really respected him. He it's seemed like, he like was he was like, one of the good ones. Yeah, he was like a, a rational at least. And even if like you disagreed with him, you still have a good conversation. Like I remember having a conversation with him over YouTube comments, like over digital versus film. I was on the film side, he's on the digital side. We had a good conversation, you know. And we could and he's like, you know, we understood each other, we agreed to disagree, and he was be reasonable. But this, like, well, why didn't you just donate everything? Well, <laughs> seriously? That's not okay. what it was. Well, okay. Uh, I don't see. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't see Collider doing any fundraisers Ooh. for charities. Because and because I'm pretty sure with your organization, the they the, could the, very easily. With, they have a lot of it's, money. It's an entire company for goodness. Oh, sake. I'm Christ, pretty man. sure you could raise more. Collider could raise like you know, like for us. Our fundraiser for Project Comic Con is like I think believe we started if I recall correctly we started in May so let's say two and a half months I'm pretty sure in two and a half months Collider you could raise more than thirteen thousand and I'm pretty sure you can raise more than twenty six thousand. Well, let's just say that they uh, they could easily fly Frosty and anybody they want to overseas to visit a set and those guys don't have to spend a goddamn penny out of their own pocket. Yeah, I'm just saying. Ah, maybe I was told that. Yeah, that was yeah. told that. Jeez, I, I they, got. they have that much. They have that much to spend. <laughs> they want to yeah. send a couple people over to a set visit in like London, or whatever. Let's just say that those guys get flown over there. They get yeah. put in a hotel. Food, everything gets yeah. paid for. But as I said, yeah. But as I said, back to um, 
our purpose, Project Comic Con's purpose. A, it's to proclaim to the claim to everyone like that we are big and so on, and you know that we've already succeeded. And B, look, it will be B. It's you know as a as the ultimate recruiting tool. The fact that we look big with all yeah. of this, it's it inspires people to want to join. And lo and behold, we've already succeeded in that. Like that bus stop ad, like that bus stop wraparound. We were seeing like pictures of people like checking it out and they and lo and behold they're they're checking out the q code and they're yeah. signing up and they're yeah. actually posting on twitter how they've been inspired to join by that bus hat there you which, go and lo and behold and speaking of the bus wraparound <laughs> i gotta say uh you know like i i think did i mention this on the vodka stream that but that this Friday, when the banner is going to be flying around and around and around Project Comic Con for two hours straight, um, the, the, the Comic Con for two hours straight, that that is that day is the one year anniversary of the Wall Street Journal hit piece. Ooh, I don't know if you did that. I don't know. I well, I, I, I tend to get drunk on that thing, well, so I can't. It's remember. funny. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> but uh, but but regardless, um, that was something like. When we were talking, when the crew was talking about it, someone brought it up as like, holy crap, you're right. Well, the bus stop wraparound had another has a holy crap moment of its own that someone brought up. I believe it was and like and Will brought it up. Hey guys, you know where we're sit where this bus stop at is situated, right? It's across the street from the San Diego Hall oh. of Justice. Yeah, that's kind of oh, uh, that's yeah. Yes. It, yeah, when I saw that picture, I was like, "Well, that's perfect." Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, to fit to, to to put it right in front of that. I mean, I think a lot of us thought it was going to be closer to Comic Con, but the fact that it was like right in front of that, I think that's that was actually pretty clever on your and behalf. I, and I don't think any of us brought this up until it was until up. this week. Yeah, until yeah. it was put. And then so then someone was, and then we was situated, and when they actually put it on, we was like, "Wait a minute." Look at where we are. Yeah. Look at where it is. And it's like <laughs> these accidental po- with this accidental poetic. So that justice. was accidental. Yeah. Wow. It was accidental. It was such a glorious. Yeah. yeah because I co- remember at first I was like, wait a minute. And even like I, I didn't I mean, I, I saw like the, you know, the correlation of all that. But I went, wait a minute. They're kind of far from the convention. But then I was like, well, it is kind of perfect. And they're already going to have, you know, you have the billboard that people yeah. see on the way in, and then you're going to have the flyover. So I was like, you know what? At first, I was kind of like, well, why didn't they get anything closer to Comic-Con? I think some people had, yeah, you know, that I talked to, like, like, why isn't closer? But then I went, well, it's it's kind of perfect to be in yeah. front of something called the Hall of Justice. Really, for us, like, the, real, the reason we had picked it was, like, we had a select options for that company. Yeah. And that was the close, that was actually the closest one that was that was also in a busy part of town where a lot okay. of people had to have like that. I figured it was something with that. I mean, the closer like, you get to Comic Con, I'm sure the, the the more expensive it probably would have gotten yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. It was like you know, it had to be within walking distance of the convention center, and it had to be in a busy part of town where a lot of people would see it. And yeah. that was happened to be the perfect balance. And lo and behold, when and it's like to quote. To paraphrase Kill Bill, when fortune smiles on something like this, it becomes proof that not only does God exist, but he's on our side. Nice. Day is Volt. Day is Volt. It's a good line. Yeah. Like it. Love it. But yeah. But like, but I also said in the chat, like when they announced like they were not gonna when Warner Bros. announced they were not gonna be at Hall H, like, guys, this is actually works in our favor. Because with Warner Brothers gone out of Hall H, no big announcements. Who dominates the DC narrative? This con- this Comic Con. It's true. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah. now, mind you, they're still going to have that booth. But what are they going to do at a booth with the booth? Are they going to do any big announcements coming from that booth? Uh, I mean, to me, I think I think uh, I think they'll drop trailers. I think some yeah, trailers think. might drop. Some Could they might do a line. tease. Yeah, they might do it. I don't know. I don't know if they'll. I mean, I, hopefully they do like a tease of Birds of Prey or. Maybe some more Joker. Who knows what they're gonna do? But I mean, they. I mean, and then of course they got Wonder Woman eighty four. But I mean, you're right. There's really they. That's when I 
researched and kind of looked into it with my video about talking about that, I went, yeah, I mean, they don't really have that much to announce. I mean, if it's just, if you're looking at Warner Brothers in a whole, I mean, obviously it's more than just DC. They got Godzilla vs. Kong, but I mean, that movie just wrapped up not too long ago. I mean, I don't know how much footage they're going to have to show with that. Maybe they'll have some like really short 30 second teaser because as far as I as far as I know, the the visual effects have only been started like I don't know a month and a half ago. I mean, they probably got some some of the big scenes, yeah, but they're not going to have much done. And then who knows what's going to happen with that if they start freaking out about stuff like oh Godzilla King of the Monsters wasn't a hit. Now we got to reshoot. Like no, don't do yeah. it. But as far as I could tell, they're not going to go too crazy with any of that. There's not going to be a oh. delay, but there very well still could yeah. be. Who knows? Well, they better but, not. I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, I wonder I wonder if the reason that they're not going too crazy is because really they're in the transition period right now. Sujahara oh, is out Christ, and, don't even know. and Sarnoff's in. Yeah, Sujahara is out and Sarnoff is in and there's going to be shakeups. I mean, I mean, didn't like uh, if it was if it wasn't last real in motion podcast or the previous or the one before where John Aaron Garza dropped that little bombshell that he's heard from his guys that. Emmerich may Emmerich's days in there are numbered because of the Me Too, <laughs> which oh, is like, gosh, oh wow, yeah, he oh, loves wow. to drop that stuff and just yeah, I know. Well, let's just uh, say you know, man, me and him have similar sources, so it's not like I haven't heard that too. And I've said that many times in videos where I'm just, and I've even told people in in DMs or just even on Twitter, it's like, yeah, you know. Don't be surprised if Emmerich ends up. There's so much shady shit. Uh, and then we got this Jeffrey Epstein thing that's coming out. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Who knows what's going to come out of that? By the way, um, bring in Jeffrey Epstein. Look, uh, if I want to play a little quick little round of six degrees of Kevin Bacon here. Oh, okay. In this case, in this case, six degrees of Donald Trump. Because you know how there's this recent – there are these recent – editorials whatever to the effect that the me too movement would not have come about if, if hillary clinton had been elected but because donald trump now me too has sprung up so hold on i yeah. remember i was on so i was on the lanterns podcast and we were talking about how trump a trump tweeted out his support of batfleck when ben affleck was cast He's oh like, yeah he 100 percent yeah, don't believe the haters. He's gonna be great. He's you gonna be know. excellent. He's gonna be the best. Be well, great. he didn't say that, but he's gonna be the best Batman yeah. ever. Yeah. You better say that. <laughs> well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, some people, I think, fun. some people when they see that screenshot, they don't want to believe it's true. It's like, no, he fucking supported Ben Affleck yes. as Batman. All right, that's number one. <laughs> number two, our our current Treasury Secretary Steve Munchen was an executive producer of BBS and Wonder Woman. Ooh. Founder of Dune Entertainment. When you see that vanity plate, Dune Entertainment, that's Steve yeah. Munchkin. Mm. So, yeah. those two little things. So, I brought this up to Lantern, and Lantern says, "Hey, you know, maybe a uh, Trump can uh, push for the Snyder Cut." And I was like, "Oh yeah, like he he calls he calls them in. He's like, hey Ed, he goes, you'll be really really great if you guys would have released the Snyder Cut. Believe me, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna it's be, be huge. Great. It's huge. Thick of you're going to be sick of winning. You're going to be tired of winning. You're going to win so much. But uh, but the thing is, if we accept that mindset that the Me Too movement would not have happened had it not been for Trump winning, the Me Too movement was – the Me Too times up thing was what got Sujahara out. And if it's mm. going to get Emmerich out, so in other words – Donald Trump is would be responsible for releasing the Snyder Cut because those were the main roadblocks. Oh, I mean – wouldn't that be something? If I mean, yeah. maybe that's the next step. Maybe that's the next step yeah. is just to try to get Trump to fucking endorse. Can you imagine? Can you There's imagine, be Eric? Eric, can you imagine yeah. the meltdown there would be yeah. if the president, President Donald Trump, yeah, did hashtag release the Snyder Cut? I mean, we all saw oh, how there was like a meltdown when Ben Shapiro has yeah. done it twice, twice now, right? Yeah. Absolutely. People melt down. I, I always laugh my ass off. The first time I went, oh my God, there's going to be a meltdown. And I re I quote tweeted it and I just fucked. I was laughing because I know that there are going to be people that are just going to lose their shit. Up their popcorn. It's seriously. And no, you know, it's pretty much. Yeah. 
It's like, he's so racist. He said that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Look at all the things he said. And I was like, guys, before you assemble your list, maybe I should let you know that Ben Shapiro has already assembled that list before you. He yeah. made it a whole article on his site. Here's a, a, a list of all the dumb things I said. Don't worry, I'll update it. Yeah, like, I know. I, I I saw I saw the list of stuff, and I'm like, yeah. I mean, like I don't I don't I don't fully agree with Ben Shapiro with yeah. everything. Like his religious stuff, I I kind of go, okay, you you pushed it a little too far. But when it comes to social stuff, I mean, I, I agree with him a lot of things. Where you know when he talks about social social things that are happening in uh. Yeah, oh, well, and he's got, and he's got good and he's got good taste in DC versus Marvel. I can oh tell yeah, you. he totally he he does. He's not a fan of the MCU too much, and, and he gives well, shit to Joss Whedon. Yeah, <laughs> just glorious and, Joss Whedon. And he wrote that wrote up that article that defended BBS. Although, here's the thing: I agree with him 100 percent on BBS, except for this one little thing in that article where he reviewed BBS. He he said. Amy Adams did fine as Lois Lane, but she's too old for Henry Cavill as Superman. Ooh, that's right. He did say that. Yeah, that was pretty fucked. Like, dude, I was like, dude, Amy Adams stopped aging at 27, okay? And you should know more than anyone how good health can keep you young, okay? Your wife's a doctor. She's, she's more I, gorgeous I, than she ever has been. My God. Yeah. I, yeah, I know. I, 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 went, I think I joked. She's aging couple, gracefully. Yeah. And, and, and I joked once, like, Amy Adams does not get older. She gets curvier. Oh, yes. Because, like, if you saw, like, her last, the last Oscars, like, she wore that, that white diamond-studded dress and all that, and it, the way it hugged her is like, Ooh. well, I, I should stop talking. I should stop talking. Because yeah, yeah, easy there, killer. I mean, I was, I was only kidding about lighting candles and getting romantic here. <laughs> oh, I my mean. word. But, look, <laughs> I'll say I, I'd I, I'd like to say like I am quite possibly her second biggest fan in the whole world. Ooh, and as you've heard it here first, folks. First, well, obviously her first fan. Well, as far as her first fan is concerned, well, I'll put it this way: to quote her, "The man who holds your heart must be a lucky fellow indeed." Oof. So, it, it seriously and seriously, she and her husband. If you've seen like. The pictures together, the videos like of their PDAs, like they're just so great together. I, I watch those pictures, like whoa, yeah. this, that's whoa. Well, yeah, it, 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 there is no chance of that fading away. It's certainly not. Uh-uh. No, wow. I mean, Amy Adams. I mean, she she only gets yeah, she only gets more gorgeous with age. I mean, like you know, if someone is gonna talk about. Oh, you know, she's too old. I'm like, well, I mean, look at her. Compare her from like Talladega Nights to now. Come on. It's like what? night and day. Once, it's like once she dyed her hair red, she, yeah. it's like she and embraced it. Aging. Yeah. She essentially stopped aging. Yeah. It's like when she was blonde, she looked sort of like late teens or whatever. Like she, she could fit in a high school movie and all that. But once she <laughs> dyed her hair red, it's like, look at her and catch me if you can. And look at her today. It's like. The only difference, as I said, is that is uh, woo, hourglass. I don't know. Oh my god, yeah. I mean, I mean there's nothing know, by wrong. The, oh, huh. by the way, if uh, if, Amy, if you're if someone showed this to you and you're listening to this, uh, I apologize. I yeah. really do. I, I I I do love you so much, but there. Yeah, you know. I, I apologize for Eric too, Amy, yeah, if you're I, listening. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> okay. said it. I haven't said anything bad. So I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. I'd like to think neither have I, but you know. If, yeah. <laughs> I will say, like, Amy Abs, like, she once, like, she said, like, she was asked for this one interview who her cinematic crush was, and she said Leo DiCaprio, and this was after Catch Me If You Can. And uh. someone, the interviewer asked, whoa, did he know this? And Amy's <laughs> like, he does now. Oh, wow. She didn't care. Yeah. She was like, let him know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it would, I mean, that would be, <laughs> that would be, would like oh, my God, that'd be a crazy day if, like, somehow... Trump to ended up doing that. I mean, yeah, I don't think he ever. I don't know. I, I mean, it's a long shot, but I mean, if I ever saw that, mm-hmm. I would just I probably crack up on the floor, belly laughing for like yeah. a good 17 minutes. Just yeah. <laughs> like, oh, my God, people are going to lose their shit because I mean, when it came to Shapiro, I mean, there's a lot of people who goes, you know, this is a guy you don't want on your side. And I'm like, no, that's who he's got two over two million subscribers. To followers, yeah. man. And you know, as I keep saying every single time, like people are like whining about the Snyder Cut should not be political. You're bringing politics into this. It would divide the movement. You're now linking it to the far right. Hey, guys, guys, speaking as 
a dude who digs Ben Shapiro and Steven Crowder and so mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. If you guys, if you guys who hate him so much, if you were to bring in some check marks on the left who have big followings and bring new followers into the movement, be I'll be fine with that. Exactly. I'm fine with that. It's kind of weird how that is, huh? When it comes yeah. to our little political climate, it's like people don't want people on the on the right or center right or whatever the hell they are. I mean, obviously, like like you said, Crowder and Shapiro always get uh, they always get the title of alt right, and I'm going, no, yeah. they're not. And even they go like, no, we're not. Can you uh, retract that? Ben, I mean, ben Shapiro is a Jewish. Oh, he's Jewish. He's, <laughs> he's Jewish. He's not a Nazi. <laughs> A lot of people say he's not, you know, seriously. he's a Nazi. And I'm like, he wears a yarmulke all the yeah. time. And seriously, these same people were saying, A, they were saying he's racist, but also they were saying he was sexist. Guys, what is the number one meme that Ben Shapiro himself embraces? My wife's a doctor. Do you really think he's <laughs> yeah. against women's empowerment? His no, wife not. is a doctor. No, he's not. He's not. And then, it, yeah, it, it's crazy how our political climate is. It's like. Yeah. You know, you got to welcome all voices. You yeah. really do. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, I have so many people that in my mentions that are conservative, you know, yeah. and, uh, and I and I embrace them. They always like hit me up, you know, especially like I posted that video last night about Chris Pratt being accused of wearing a white supremacist Chris shirt, Pratt. you know, for yeah. God's flag, for yeah. God's flag. <laughs> Guys, like the God's, I, I, although. I know why the left hates the Gatson, the far left hates the Gatson yeah, flag I get so much, it. because ever since 2010, it's the, it's the unofficial, it's the officially the flag of the Tea Party, and mm-hmm. they hate it so much, because Tea Party was like, at long last, the right is energized like the left always has been. Yeah. So there you go. And so they hate the Gatson flag, and they're looking for any excuse to smear it, so lo and behold, Chris Pratt's wearing it, it's like, ah, you're linking yourself to the far right, to the alt-right. Seriously, yeah, but they they've been going after Pratt for a bit though, and, and you know, and I even told people I'm like the reason why is because you know he's a white guy in Hollywood yeah. who has Christian yeah. values, and people yeah. always say, oh, that's conservative values, and, and they this, that, fear. and this, and, you know and it's just they, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and they fear that he is becoming a force of nature that they cannot touch, like Clint Eastwood. He's on the right. Oh, he's yeah. on the right, but they can't touch him because he's a force of nature. He is invincible. He is a guaranteed success. And Hollywood would never dare blacklist him. Same oh, with wouldn't. Gary Sinise. He's like, everyone, oh, yeah. you can't help but love him because of what, all he's done for the troops. Oh, my um, God. He's done now, so much charity work. And, and it's like, you, how, but of course, people will, you know, demonize him as, oh, because you're, you know, and it's like, that's what I hate about Hollywood. And, you know, what's funny, too, is I always tell people this. I remember my dad actually told me this. My dad, Mexican, 100%. Is yeah. conservative. He's conservative. He voted for Trump. Does he always agree with him? No. But yeah. that's why I always get best, you know, and I got pissed because uh, Ava DuVernay said, like, oh, if you support Trump, he's racist. You're racist if you support him. And I'm like, fuck, I have, you know, on my Mexican side, my dad, yeah. my uncle, yeah. my my cousin, they all voted for him. And like, you're yeah. talking about a retired, my dad, a retired army helicopter pilot, 33 years. My uncle, a retired sheriff from L.A., my cousin. Yeah. He's got four tours overseas, <sighs> Afghanistan, still in the Marines who did it, yeah. you know, Mexican. You know, it's just like, it, it's just stuff like that irks the shit yeah. out of me because, I mean, I, I, and I've said it many times before, I literally had somebody who I've had on my podcast yeah. that said, oh, watch out. Oh, yeah, Trump's after your family. I'm going, no, he's not. No! <laughs> Like most of them, most like not most of them, but you know, a couple of them, few of them voted for him. They are not fearing that. They're yeah. here legally. They have made yeah. great livings. Everything is fine. Yeah. I'm like, what? how I'll dare t- you fucking say that? That yeah. Trump is after my family. I was I'll, like, I'll, that's I'll, racist. <laughs> like, yeah, Jesus. that's racist. And yeah. I'm ashamed. You're you're the racist here, dude. And I'm ashamed to be in the same room with you. And so, yeah, uh, right. Yeah, it internet room. I couldn't believe when he told me that. I was like, "Wow, did you just fucking say that?" And like, they're fine. They're not worried at all. I don't know what the yeah. hell you're like thinking about, man. You're just, well, yeah. you just think my Mexican side is just all fucking, you know, you know, doing yard work and this, that, and this, and they're here yeah. illegal. No, it's not the way it works. It's yeah. crazy. But 
That's what happens when they do these euphemisms. Like instead of yeah. illegal immigrant, they just say immigrant. And still to that they just say undocumented worker and so I on. Know. George, it's all it's George, all the chan- it's all the it's all the way that you uh, say the words George, and everything. George Carlin spinning in his grave at all this nonsense. Oh, you know what's funny is like, <clears throat> and what's funny about George Carlin, he was super yeah. liberal. He was a very <laughs> liberal person. But if he yeah. was alive today doing his act, people would yeah. say that he's alt right. Yeah, and they he would say that one hundred percent. Yeah. And he himself said, I believe it was when he was on Opie and Anthony or something, he said, look, I was expecting all of this censorship to come from the right because of all the talk about family values. I did not expect it to come from the left, but this is what political correctness is. Seriously. Oh, yeah. He had a great line that said, I think I'm paraphrasing. I can't remember the line, but he said like uh, fascism or no, what does he say? What did he say? God. PC, like he said, like uh, uh, politically correct is just like fascism, but nicer. I don't know. He said something. Yeah. I forgot the guilty line. White, guilty white yeah. Bush are liberals. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, it's just, it, yeah. If he were alive today, he would be deemed an alt right comedian just because. Yeah. But he, but if you actually listen to his stand up, he had so many liberal yeah. uh, plot points or like talking points. Yeah. He did. And as he said, as he said, like in his uh, feminist sketch, look, I mu- look, I agree with m- with feminism as it's been explained to me. But the thing is, I mock any group that I feel takes itself too seriously and gets oh, pissed yeah. off easily. And it doesn't take much to piss off a feminist. <laughs> all you have to do is oh, go God, to headquarters. That. And all you have to do is go to now headquarters and say, hey, which of you cupcakes want to make me a sandwich? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, I remember. Oh, dude, you don't even know. I've watched every single one of his, uh, every single one of his um, specials yeah. from oh, when he started. Yeah. I mean, he had like what 16, 17 specials on HBO. I've watched every single one of them multiple times. I got to see him live over oh, here wow. in uh, SoCal. It was one of. I mean, this was like this was probably about six or seven, eight months before he died. I was so glad I got to see him live before he passed away. I was broken up when he passed away. I was like heartbroken because right. he was my favorite comedian. Still is. He was, know, just, he, he was just something you know, else. He, but you know what he did that last that last stand up? Like you saw him just before he died, right? Yeah. So in other words, he passed the mantle on to you. <laughs> That'd be pretty Seriously. sweet. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. But going back, but going back a bit, if we go back a bit to the whole Hollywood thing, like Hollywood yeah. concerns, like are more or less afraid to come out of the closet, if you will, unless they're they know they're force of nature like Clint Eastwood and they know it, yeah. or they're more or less retired and says I don't care anymore. But it's like it's funny because Brett Easton Ellis, you know, mm. guy who did American Psycho, he yep. actually like he has his podcast, and as he keeps pointing out, the Beverly Hills neighborhood, that that district went for Trump. That's crazy. Beverly you wouldn't think Hills. that, especially in California, because yeah. California is such a blue state. It's yeah. almost like, why do I even vote? Because fucking, yeah. I mean, it's going to be blue no matter what. Yeah. But Beverly Hills, the uh, the creme de la Hills. creme of the Hollywood elite went for Trump, which means there's a lot more A-listers than on the right than you would think. And, you know, I think it was like... Well, uh, I've mentioned it before, too. I mean, Dwayne Johnson, he's... Dwayne Johnson? He's conservative. Uh, he doesn't say yeah. it. But I, yeah. he's fairly, my God, yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, he might not be full on, but he might be like more, you know, but he doesn't really talk politics. And the reason why yeah. is because yeah. he's got more conservative values, Yeah. but he doesn't so, want to fucking shit the bed. Well, he, and he, he knows. It's funny. it's funny though, because Dwayne Johnson would be, I suspect he would, he is a force of nature. So if he were oh. to come out, they would be afraid to touch him. So you know what, be- you know, what's going to probably happen. I mean, he doesn't want to do it now. Yeah, he doesn't want to talk. I mean, he talks about, I mean, obviously there's people that say like, oh, you should run for president, run for president. And, you know, he's joked about it. But of course, I mean, if you look at his future filmography, I mean, he's got like, you know, 22 franchises he's still got to do in the like, next five years. I'm, honestly, he should take a cue from a predecessor of his and run for governor of California first. Oh, no, no, no. I think, I think, you know what I think is going to happen? I think once Dwayne Johnson, his career starts dwindling down a little bit you know yeah. as soon as like the franchises start dwindling down i think mm. he will end up pursuing office he's still fairly young he's still in his 40s late 40s he still looks great but i think once his career starts dwindling down a little bit still starts getting older in age he's going to start wanting to make it a difference 
politically. Yeah. Her, and yeah. people well, are going to be shocked when he has more conservative, yeah. more right-leaning values. People are going to be super shocked. Like, and he's going to get... Gonna be, and they can't say anything because he's such... A, they can't really... They can't call him racist. Well, he's got like every fucking race with yeah. him. <laughs> They'll see... They will see the R next to his name and flip their lids. But oh, I'll say this... Flip- and honestly, I'll tell you who else I think is a force of nature, and this should be no surprise that I'm bringing her up again. But the thing is, she doesn't. I don't think she knows it that she's a force of nature. That's Amy Adams, and I'll tell you oh, why okay. I think that. I'll tell you why I think that, for the simple fact that whenever, even though Amy Adams is silent about politics directly, she is often kind of sort of touched on the social aspect of it particularly when it comes to manhood and wo- and masculinity femininity like she said things like men like i want men to be men and like women should be women like she's extolled mm. classical masculinity femininity she one. said she said one. like yeah she said um in this one interview like for bbs of all things um I don't believe a woman needs to act like a man to be strong. You can be soft and gentle and compassionate and still be strong. And the thing is, here's the thing. The thing she has said is the kind of thing that under normal circumstances, these SJW feminazis, let's call them that, (laughs) they usually would freak out over and say, get in line. But the thing is, they tried that with Emma Watson. Because mm. Emma Watson was like being propped up as the as the new face of feminism, but she, of all things, all she did was like pose on the front cover of a magazine, and they got ticked off because objectification. But all they did was shake her up and was like, "I don't understand. Feminism is supposed to be at li- about liberation. We're not supposed to be prudes." And they's like, they realized too late, "Oh crap, we're starting to make her have second thoughts." Yeah. But here's the thing: they, I think, the feminists, these these. Self-proclaimed pseudo-feminist, the pseudo-feminist matriarchy, let's call them that, they are afraid to touch Amy Adams because if a fight breaks out between her them and her, they ain't gonna win. No, everybody not at all. loves her. Everybody loves her. But the thing is, either she doesn't know it or she's like, you know, transparent, like Michael Jordan. Hey, people from the other side of the aisle, they buy Nikes too, or they watch movies too. And she's just mm-hmm. that nice. But also, there she did that. Um, Time Magazine did that YouTube video where they paired her up, like after Rival, they paired her up with Obama's like um, UN ambassador, uh, Samantha Powers, for some reason. And Samantha Powers is like, um, and Amy's, if you watch the video, her whole thing that she's basically saying over and over is like, why am I even here? I'm an actress. I'm not political. I shouldn't be political. <laughs> I but, love it. And, but, but, but Samantha Powers is basically trying to prod her like gently, trying to passively, aggressively try to coax her into talking politics with her. But she finally, near the end, Amy actually says, look, um, I don't talk politics and I'm afraid that one day like I'll eventually just snap and it'll all come pouring out. It's yeah. like, hmm. Mm, but look, you got to wonder. No. Yeah, you got to wonder. I mean, but here's the thing. All I know is that, well, A, she said all those great things about, but she's also a patriot because, you know, this is one of the main reasons that I fell in love with her was when she gave her first class seat for that to that soldier. A few mm, years back. That's always yeah. a good. Yeah. Now, and then she did it in a way like she didn't want she wa- she didn't want anyone to make a big deal about it. But some reporter like was in first class and happened to put two and two together. But she also didn't. And this proof, and this comes no surprise because her father was in was uh, served. Her father mm. served, yeah. and she was born. She was born on a military base in Italy. So there you go. Yeah, but but the fact the fact that she was born on an American base means she was born on U.S. soil. Therefore, she's a natural born citizen. Therefore, she could run for president if she wanted to, which would be interesting, because mm. Jeremy Renner said, Jeremy Renner said, for her. Yeah. Hey, yeah. who wouldn't? Oh, fuck. One hundred percent. Yeah. But anyway, but but um, but the thing is, she she made it a point. She told the flight attendant, like, don't tell the soldier who did it. Don't even tell her that a woman did it. Because as a trained gentleman, the soldier would feel honor bound to turn down a seat given to him by a, by a lady. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. So she made a point, like, don't tell him anything. Just give him the seat. And then afterwards, she talked to him and, like, thank, and thank you for your service and all that good stuff. That's awesome. I love yeah, it yeah. when I hear those stories, when I hear uh, celebrities yeah. giving their first class seats to soldiers. I mean, yeah. it's just – it's. That's just that's one hundred percent. You're just you have a you know a gold check mark in my book. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, I just because I mean, I come from military. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an army brat. 
Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you know, just... I'm, a, I'm what you would call like second generation. Cause like, um, my, my, my dad went through the train, the basic training and all that, but he got an honorable discharge cause you know, family obligations and all oh, that. Okay. Yeah, but, my, my, but my grandfather, but my grandfather was a Marine in Nam, nice. and he was, he got, and he contracted agent orange. Oh, wow. Is, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> People. It was, but it was yeah. Nam. So there you go. Oh, by the way, trivia hmm. note, my, my, that grandfather of mine, Harold Wayne Blake was also, he, after he, after, you know, he served his service in, in Nam. He was a military liaison to Hollywood. Wow. And when when and there are times where like when when the studios would make movies near at or near this base and uh, he would be the one that would like work with that would work with them. And one of those movies was that Andy Griffith, William Shatner movie, Pray for the Wildcats. And there is <laughs> there is a picture somewhere buried in one of like in, in one of the family's uh, properties and all that, or the family folks and all that. Someone has this picture of my dad shaking hands with William Shatner and Andy Griffith. Holy shit! Yeah, I, I know. Find that picture, man. Oh we got. God. I know because yeah. the book we do, we got to like scan it. I'm gonna be like posting it. It's like, wow, this is so cool, dude. Yeah, you really got to find that image. My God. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's 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 all crazy, you know, and, and you know, um, yeah. If Amy Adams were to, <laughs> if she were yeah. to eventually run, I definitely uh, endorse. Yeah. But even Dwayne Johnson, I mean, yeah. I mean, going back to him, if I, I mean, I, I honestly think that eventually, once the career, I mean, his career is still. I mean, it might not be, maybe not as well. We got Hobbs and Shaw coming out, and that movie's probably gonna kill it. But you know, he's had a little hic- some hiccups in the in the recent past but yeah i think as soon as uh you know he he's gonna get into his 50s the 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 powerhouse movie star because he's the biggest movie star in the world right now is gonna start going down a little bit because it's it's hollywood you can't be a huge 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 on top of the mountain movie star for too long you could still be known you could still be this that, and this but it's gonna dwindle down a little bit and i would not be surprised if he like got himself into politics to try to just make a difference and but yeah, I think people would be would be shocked that he would hold some conservative values, and there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. No, of course no. not. Of course there's nothing. Not. I mean, not every conservative is like all about that. That you know, they're not they're not no, all Bible thumpers and like this that. There this, is and, no yeah, especially after the rise of the Tea Party, which is where the Repu- the GOP like formally accepted libertarians into the ranks. There's there is no one litmus litmus test. Yeah, and you never know. He could run libertarian and all of a sudden be the first president to be elected yeah. as a libertarian. That's what I'm waiting for. I want somebody yeah. you know who's independent to fucking win this thing. I mean, every time yeah. you hear about an independent, you're like, oh yeah, this guy didn't stand a chance. I mean, Ross Perot probably had the most yeah. success as an independent. Yeah. God, you know, rest in peace. He just passed away recently. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think he had like what the most success as an independent. Mm-hmm. It would be awesome if somebody just came in there and yeah. just fucking nailed hey. it as an independent, oh. not on one of the sides, you know. Oh, another six degrees of Kevin Bacon. You're, mm-hmm. it was, this all went in a roundabout way to Ross Perot. Ross Perot <laughs> then went on to form the Reform Party, and guess who uh, helped found it with him? Who? Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, man. It, it is funny how all that is. I mean... yeah. Uh, I, mean, I yeah. always, yeah, I always, uh, when it comes to Trump, I don't like, I mean, when, when he yeah. tweets, sometimes I'm like, God damn it, stop yeah. it. I mean, just do your job, run the fucking country. You're a businessman, yeah. you know, a little bit of what's going on. And I get, yeah, you know, so. I get annoyed with all that stuff, but I mean, it, it's just funny it's because fun. when everybody's just like, I mean, when the hashtag, uh, what was the hashtag racist president or, uh, oh, racist oh, chief, oh, whatever the hell. Not and I was just friend, like, you know? I was, I, I just kind of thought to myself, I'm like, nobody thought Donald Trump was racist till he ran for office. That's what's weird. Mm. You know, has uh, that always been the case? He literally, there's literally a picture of him getting a civil rights recognition. Yeah. He stands next to but Rosa yeah. frickin' Parks! Is that who he is? Yeah. He's, take, yeah. he's taking pictures with Jesse Jackson. Uh, yeah. Uh, who's the comedian? Russell Simmons. Is that the, that's a black comedian, right? Russell, I always get Russell Simmons and Bill Simmons <laughs> confused for some reason because of the Simmons. Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons is the hip hop guy. Yeah. Okay. But there's, yeah, 
I, I remember yeah. hearing him on a podcast. Uh, Sir Muhammad Ali. Yeah. I remember hearing him on a podcast. I think it was him. I don't know. He was on Adam Carolla's podcast, and they, they talked oh. about him and Trump. And he said, like, oh, yeah, me and Trump, we've been, like, almost best friends <laughs> I mean, till oh. now. Pretty much the whole rap community is now pretty much has always admired Trump. So she'd be, she, it shouldn't be any surprise that Kanye West and Chance the Rapper and the others were like supporting him or like yeah. Jim Brown likes him. The great, it's, yeah, it's a weird thing. It's just such a weird thing. And I like how, like, how it all just turned like that. I mean, I get it. I mean, he said, he just says stuff, he just pours it out of his face. I mean, he kind of sounds like maybe your semi racist uncle at a party when he just starts talking about stuff. Yes, I get yeah. that. But I mean, is he like, when you when you talk about the full on definition of like what a racist is, is he that? I don't know. I mean, Are a lot of people it, that? I no, I think like I think in 2019 in this PC culture, everybody's just everybody's racist now. You say one bad thing, you're just automatically a full on racist. A lot of people just want to play that card. People have tried to play that card with me, not realizing that my last name is Benya. I've had I've yeah. actually had to pull that out where I'm like, you yeah. see my I'm, last name, right? Because yeah. I've actually I mean, had it's... people go like, oh, look, the white guy is saying this. I'm like, uh, I'm only half. Look at my last well, name, buddy. It's it's funny because. Um... Even though I, I don't have the shield of my name because because Blake is is, is Blake. Wa- yeah you got a pretty it's, it's, as name. Waspy, it's as waspy as you get but <laughs> I'm pretty mixed I am pretty mixed oh, I've yeah, got, you are. what are I've you got, exactly like what do you okay. mix with okay on my dad's side um British Irish Pennsylvania Dutch and Cherokee how wow, pale face so you got Indian in you yeah yes how pale face anyway <laughs> on my mom's side on my mom's side English Dutch Cuban and Mexican. Oh man, you got a lot of brown in you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, see, I mean, me, I'm just boring. I'm Mexican and white. Well, my mom, you know, she's Czech, German, all that stuff, and my dad's just like, "Yep, Mexican." <laughs> yeah. Although I will say, although I will say, my name does have a nice heritage. Now, I would like to say William Blake is or uh, is a uh, part of my or what's his name? William Blake is part of my heritage, but we haven't made any connections yet. But I am the uh, direct descendant of a knight named Sir Thomas Blake, and his son, who is not my ancestor, like more like my great 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 uncle, was the uh, secret keeper and personal clerk to uh, Henry the Sixth. Oh wow! Yeah, man, pretty cool. That is and awesome. as such, and as such, I would like to think I have nothing to back this up, but I would like to think that Sir Thomas, my ancestor, was one of the band of brothers for Henry the Fifth. Wow. Because Sir Thomas got, implies knight. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And you got quite a history there. I would like to think so. Yeah, I mean, and and you can't discredit that. I mean, I, I've actually, you know, seen I mean, like, some of the stuff that you like retweet and tweet out. I'm like, wow, look at look at Eric, man. He's like he he's tweeting out about this and that. I'm like, you don't see oh, that much. You don't see that I, much. Yeah, this is what happens when you have a bachelor's in political science and a master's in film studies. Oh, there you go. Educated yeah. man. There you go. Be a South Asia, baby. Well, I love it, man. I love it. And I love the fact that you're, you know, you're helping with the Snyder con stuff. And hopefully, like, none of these guys hold that against you. You know, your, you know, your, your political values or whatever the hell. Hopefully that's not the case because it shouldn't be the case. That's what I, that's what I, that's what pisses me off. It's like when someone just discredits you for either mm-hmm. supporting Trump or even just supporting Christian or conservative values or the hell i i it, it's it's really shitty i mean i've been called and i've been called a nazi sympathizer i've been called a nazi i've been called racist homophobic i've been called I, all of it under the under the and i just laugh at it because it doesn't yeah. mean anything nowadays it doesn't yeah. hurt me because i know it's just that's just a way to talk down somebody it's not a good way to win an argument because it's used so so much now and i just don't let it I just don't let it get to me. And it, and then, you know, even like the other day when Ava DuVernay, which, man, it just makes me so worried about that new God's movie, my guy. Yeah. Well, uh, honestly, you know, and I, I'm going to say that because, hey, because Wrinkle in Time was a shit sandwich. It was bad. Yeah. And honestly, mm. yeah. And honestly um, even Wrinkle in Time aside, yeah. Yeah, even Wrinkle in Time aside, she hired Tom King, the guy yeah. who castrated, the guy who, re- who castrated Batman. I've that too. To be his- my, my buddy Seek, who's been on uh, my vodka stream in the podcast, 
he like when I tweeted that out, I thought like that was a good thing. And then he goes, Are you sure about that? And I went, yeah. Huh. Maybe uh, I mean, yeah, maybe I was just I was just wrapped up in the fact that a comic book writer was helping out with the script. I mean, so maybe that wasn't a good idea. I mean, I've been hearing go- I've heard good things about his Mr. Miracle. And if they're if Mr. Miracle is like the main character, fine. But I don't know just what he did to Batman, you know, that yeah, whole, I heard it was a all bad, that it was bad. I didn't check that, it out, but I heard it was, it bad. was just all the build up. To the oh. wedding, like all that publicity, even calling that wedding issue the wedding album, referring to the Clark Lois wedding in yeah. the comics, and then they yank the rug out, and oh, then for the yeah. rest of Tom King's run, it's just Batman being depressed, oh, depressed, God. depressed, depressed, more <laughs> depression, more depression, blah blah blah. Seriously, Batman needs happiness. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's all crazy stuff, man. But uh, hey, let's uh, let's get to some questions now. I think we've yes, uh, sir. rambled on for a, you know about stuff for for a good amount of time. So let's uh, let's talk some questions here. Like I said, if you guys want to ask me a question on this podcast, <clears> just uh, <throat> best way to do it is just on Twitter hashtag Film Junket Podcast. Easiest way to find it because I know some people when I tweet out, hey, ask me questions, they they forget the hashtag part. And that's just like, I lose it in my mentions, you know, that's just what happens. So here we go. Star Wars fan. What is that? Kalali? I don't know. Yeah. You you know who you are. Um, Film Junket Podcast. You don't have to say this on your podcast. I'm just unaware of your, of you checked my D. Oh, this is a guy that's like, he's hit hit me up on the DM. So he just wants to make sure I saw it. I'll check it out, dude. Yeah. Sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm bad. I'm bad at like checking my DMs. You know, I'll see somebody and they'll write me like a fucking essay about something. And I'm like, okay, I'll check it out later. And then I forget about it. Anyways, let's move on to uh, JJ at Superman Hack. Dave, do you anticipate any surprises from this year's uh, San Diego Comic-Con? Or is it just going to be the motions or both sides, DC and Marvel? I don't think there's going to be too many surprises, right? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, Even from Marvel. I mean, the MCU probably will maybe announce... Yeah. Some of their slate, I would guess. I mean, I mean, the only real, the only real thing that has caught my interest is what's going to happen at Comic Con. Well, is mainly that is like Henry Cavill being there to promote The Witcher, and yeah. there's you know someone has got. I, I, I would say you know, except well, we all knew, quote unquote, that someone was going to ask Snyder about the Snyder Con at, at Snyder Con, but that didn't happen. But there's got to be. It something. happened, but it just wasn't in the right spots. Oh. <laughs> Spider Man, who's your favorite? And <laughs> my eye. But anyway, wow. um, but it's just it, it, it's it's very likely. Let's put it that way: that someone's got to ask him about is he still going to be Superman, or maybe someone who's particularly aggressive can ask him what's your opinion of the Snyder Cut now. Because here's the thing: everybody like there are these all these people whining, like pointing to the headlines of the articles where he says that the Snyder Cut wouldn't make any difference. He was talking about the financial aspect, and that was of a course. year ago. It's all about I'm context. Sure. Nobody likes context. They just read yeah. headlines, and that's it. Yeah. He was talking about the – yeah, but really what he said, he, he said nothing about, about whether or not he thinks the Snyder Cut would be better. He said he didn't know because he didn't see the, the, foot, the Snyder Cut footage. He just you know, filmed it, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, I mean, I I I felt bad for. I remember, you know, after seeing the uh, when I went to saw when I saw the press screening at Warner Brothers, and then I uh, I, t- I hightailed it over over to the premiere, and I saw all those guys walk in. And when I saw Cavill walk in, I went, "Oh my God, does he realize that the opening scene of this movie, his face is fucked? Like, what is he? What is he gonna think?" I felt so bad for him. Yeah. I feel so Got bad. To. I was like, my God. I'm like, the first scene is so bad and your face looks so bad. Like, I don't know how I mean you're gonna be in a you're gonna be in this theater full of like coworkers and people in the biz and fans and it's like how how is he gonna react to that? And you I was, know? with that in mind, look and as I as I tell people has it never occurred to you people who are dumping on him and calling him a snake and a traitor? Has it never occurred to you people that maybe he's working, trying to work behind the scenes and fighting behind the scenes? And maybe that's why Warner Brothers has been dragging their feet on Men of Steel too. You're <laughs> welcome, people. There you go. You heard her first. 
Okay, uh, BR, Bri May, at Bri May, he asks, uh, whose point of view did the BVS fight play out with oh, in yes. Justice League? Oh, is this the one that you wanted to answer? Yeah. Yeah, Vic, I was begging him. Yeah, Vic would make sense uh, if he's the heart of the, that, that story, but I'm not sh- so sure. All, and then he puts in parentheses, also Vic seeing how heroes and outsiders are treated might also play into uh, the, the ambivalence of becoming a hero himself, being so different. So whose point of view did the BBS fight play out yeah. with it? it? What do you think? It, well, th- it's very interesting because this is almost a three-part discovery. Like, it was you, me, and then John Aaron Garza. Because yeah. you, you said on this one vodka stream, I know how – you said you, – you've been saying, I know how it begins, and uh-huh. you were – Give, you were dropping these things like saying, look, that you, hinting essentially that it was par- in parallel in some way with BBS. And then someone, well, that and, and you know, how, B, how does BBS begin? It begins with, you know, um, it begins with the narration, the montage and all that of the backstory, the just backstory. And then it begins with a recap of the climax of Man of Steel from another perspective, from Bruce's yeah, perspective. Exactly. And I remember I posted in that vodka stream, hey, you know. I wonder because what was going through my head was that scene of Lois waking up in her bed, reaching out to the empty side of the bed. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, okay, putting two and two together, the climax of BVS, the death of Superman, Lois is Lois has got to be like what she's waking up from something. She's got to be having nightmares. Up, and she's reaching for Clark as if to reassure herself, don't worry, he's he's still alive, and he's not. Yeah. So therefore, it would make sense, if you're going to do that recap, that it would be uh, the death of Superman, but it would, but, but we would stay with Lois. Uh. So it would be from Lois' perspective. So I posted that, and you said, uh, I'm not going to say one way or the other, <laughs> but you're on the right track. Pretty much. And John Aaron Garza... Took that and ran with it. First, he posted an article. As he does. <laughs> and then, and then, of course, as we all know, he made that video, that alternate opening of Justice League. Uh-huh. uh-huh. So, Which and by the great. way, and here's the thing. I get the argument, and, 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 though mainly people bring this up when arguing, when I'm discuss, discussing with me over how Justice League ends, like who has the ending speech. You all know how I feel because I refuse to believe that the man who stripped away Lois's backstory, like all her, like her subplot and all that, those beautiful emotional moments and replaced it with thirsty would be the same guy who gave, who would give Amy Adams the honor of closing out the film. I cannot believe that number one. And number two the segment of her speech that we hear in the uh, the motion posters where she says, um, only from the darkness can we truly feel the light. Like, that sounds more like a firm planting the flag on Snyder's vision than it is trying to get away from Snyder's vision, which is what, which is what Whedon was doing and ball cap and all the rest were doing. Yeah. So as such, like, I'm, that's why I've been so, and the fact that Lois's arc in Justice League would most blatantly parallel the loss of hope and the restoration of hope for the world. So it would make sense for Lois to be the one to close it out and proclaim the return of hope. But then, but the argument is always, but Cyborg was the heart of the movie. And my response is, well, Clark and Lois were the heart of BVS, and yet Bruce opens and closes the movie. Mm-hmm. And, and here's the other thing. If Justice League parallels the beginning of BVS. Why wouldn't it parallel the end? Because the because um, Batman v Superman begins with Bruce. Justice League begins with Lois. Mm. Therefore, if BVS begins, if BVS ends with Bruce's narration, the men are still good speech. Why wouldn't that parallel be maintained for the end? Because there's that whole idea of balance. So, well, that's my argument. And look, and I get the arguments that Stephen Colbert um, gave that you've given. Um, but here's but here's an interesting theory that has recently popped into my head because I've given this a lot of thought. One thing that we often 
that we've that we've we've tended to shrug off this one little part of that vid of that video of Zach saying, yes, there's a cut. It's done. It's up to them. But there's that one little thing he says, I have a bunch of them. Yeah. What does that mean? I can't yeah. help wondering. There is he doesn't have one specific Snyder cut. He may have different versions that are all satisfying to him and they have different variations. Like I've been hearing, cause I have my guys too, that there are different variations, for example, on who shows up in the history lesson. Like there is a version, there's a version where it's all Uxas, Uxas. And yeah. there's another Uxas. version. Yeah. yeah, Uxas. There's another version where it's all Steppenwolf, which would have been like late in the game where they would have told Snyder to take it away. And there would be another version where they both show up. And I think that that's that's one would have been interesting. And there's yeah. also like if, if we believe yeah, Kevin Smith, if we believe Kevin Smith's rundown of the Snyder cut, that there was a that there's a version where Victor dies, where Cyborg dies and Steppenwolf tears him apart. But Bruce and uh, Barry are in the back cave and they're they have there's they have hope that they can revive him. Yeah, person. it's it, it's always interesting because, you know, yeah. obviously they do a bunch of test screenings and stuff and things yeah. always change. And then I've heard that many times with with these yeah. movies. But and uh, say, yeah, yeah, I mean, it could be who knows. It could I be think both. I think I think when it comes to uh, when he said that, yeah, there's multiple cuts. Yes, that's actually absolutely true. And that's true with yeah. any movie. You're going to have multiple cuts. You're going to have, okay, let's watch it like this, and then you're going to do another one. Hey, let's remove this this little part right here, blah, blah, blah. I think when it comes to like the definitive Snyder cut, that's the three-hour three, three hour and 34-minute one. This is the one that he wants to get out there. That's why he's like, okay, hey, circle 214, but, yeah. that's it. But in the meantime, yeah. I do have like 12 others. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I will say this, like as far as this, uh, like Victor Stone's recording, look, I I've said this a lot too. Look at the actual article. All Joe Morton said was, yes, like Silas dies. He leaves a recording for Victor inspiring him. And we hear in the trailers, it's time, Victor, for you to be the hero you were always meant to be. Now, um, but, but the article itself jumps to the conclusion that, it, that Lois's speech replaced it. And, and it was Whedon who did it. But uh -huh. here's the thing. I've long thought, like, even either Zach has different cuts where where Silas, where one version Silas ends it and the other version Lois ends it, or he he does have the recording. We hear the recording at a different point. And here's the thing. And as I've said, for me, the perfect moment to have that line of Silas, it's time to be the hero you were always meant to be, is when the league are locking and loading, getting ready to fight Steppenwolf for the last time, and the uh, the ramp for the troop carrier lowers down, and you see them all in the lineup, and you hear Silas saying that, it's time to be the hero you were always meant to be. Well, it's time for the League to be the heroes, as they're yeah. great to fight one last time. I say that would be the perfect spot to have that recording. And then you can have Lois' speech at the very end, so that way you have the best of both worlds. Yeah, you gotta wonder if there's, you know, if there's multiple with yeah. whoever ends it. I mean... Yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting. Uh, okay. But uh, let's go to the next question. Ambarish, Ambarish seventeen. He asks, "What do you guys think of DC Films' black label strategy? If so, Ooh. what other movies would you want to see under that label?" Ooh. I mean, dude, I, I like I commend I commend oh. Todd Phillips for fucking yes. at at his after party for his movie War Dogs. Which was mm -hmm. what a few years ago? Yes. Just to walk up at, to Warner Brothers, he probably he probably had a little, couple drinks. He had some uh, liquid encouragement, and he said, yeah. "Hey, I want to do a Joker movie. It's going to be unconventional, and you guys should really do like a, an offshoot, Black an category. off category." Oh um, yes, not Elseworlds. That's fucking awesome. Oh, Elseworlds. Yes. yes. It, well, here's the thing. The moment, like when they mentioned it was going to be an essentially an Ellis Worlds film, I my mind was reeling on exactly this kind of question: What kind of films would I want to see? Like, well, a lot God. of people were saying Red Sun, yeah, um, Red Sun, know. yeah. But for me, for me, there are two, but they're both Superman ones. One, the first one I would want would be Speeding Bullets. Okay, that's the one. If for those of you who don't know, that's the one where Clark Kent 
lands in Gotham before the Wayne family, before Thomas and Martha would have had Bruce. So, and because they have this son, they don't, they don't decide they don't to have Bruce. their own baby. Yeah. They don't, and they, and they named this kid Cal L Bruce and he becomes <laughs> Bruce Wayne. The parents are gunned down. He becomes that would be Batman. A great that would be but, a and, but the thing is, you also have, because like, because he's in Gotham and not in Metropolis, Lex Luthor has essentially taken over Metropolis. Perry and Lois moved to Gotham and they set up a newspaper, their newspaper there. Uh. So Lois and Perry. And of course, like it's in the, it was in like the 90s. It was in that post-crisis era. So Lois is still read it. So I was thinking, you know what? Bring in the DCEU cast, Henry Cavill, Jeremy Irons, Lawrence Fishburne, Amy Adams, Jesse Eisenberg, because there's that little spoil, a little twist as to what happens with Luther near the end. That would be that I think people would say, yes, Jesse Eisenberg would be a, even though these people, if you hated Jesse Eisenberg as Lex, you say, yeah, he's great for this Lex. So yeah. I would love speeding bullets, but I would also be interesting to do Superman, like son of Superman, which is like sort of an alternate universe thing where like, Clark's son, like his son, a super son, like has grown up as an adult, and there's an interesting like dynamic. I mean, that happens there. Uh, but you know, see, whoever. I've always had I, I I had an idea, and I remember I I think I did I yeah I did it in a video where I was like, you know, what would if DC really wanted to do something different? But the, at the same time, I'm like, I, it would only it only just the fans would only dig it. It's just, they use the same actors, but they just did, you know, they did the different types of like stories because we know when you look at comic books, there's different stories, there's different writers. They're going to have different takes and they're going to put stuff out there. And I'm like, well, you know, it'd be awesome. Like, what if they did a kingdom come like Superman, you know, a justice league movie, but they used, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Kingdom Come. What if they used the same, what if they used all those actors, but it just didn't follow like, you know, a connected universe. I don't know. I always had, like, an idea of, like, they just use the same characters but for the various different stories, you know, or the same actors, I should say. Yeah. It would be interesting to do Gotham by Gaslight. That, yes, yes. That's an offshoot of a Batman story, yeah. Yeah. And another one would be um, Superman, A Nation Divided, which is is Clark in the Civil War, as a Civil War. Stuff like that, yes. And. But the thing is, like, I would also love to make that a two-parter. Like, the first one would be that comic, him in the Civil War, but at the end of that comic— he rides off into the old west. So maybe a sequel where he's a western gunfighter hero yeah. and that's and you have Lois as a reporter for Harper's Weekly and you have Jonah Hex. Oh yeah, that's right cuz you're right there, yeah. Just and, yeah, and right know, there in and the I, And I know who I would cast as Jonah Hex. Who? It would be Mike, Michael Madsen. Michael Madsen. Yeah, not a hate- bad choice. Look at him in the hateful light. He's got the long hair no, and everything. He does. Just, just no, yeah. Like, yeah, I could see it. I could see. I mean, yeah, he, he could. Play, he could definitely play that character. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. not a bad choice for. Her. Yeah. I know he's had his problems, but still, I think. Yeah. yeah I think you're right, and have it directed by Quentin Tarantino. Oh yeah. Sure, wouldn't that be great? Jesus Christ! Yeah. I, I'm so looking forward to his Star Trek movie. I keep hearing stuff oh. about it. I'm like, this shit's yes. actually happening. It's like- Yes, thing. I have been a Star Trek fan for the longest time, and yeah, and when that announcement happened, I actually like I was on Facebook at the time, so I posted it and I said, "In the category of things I never knew I wanted." Yeah, I don't think anybody knew they wanted that. Because yeah. like, nobody Quentin- knew that they wanted like, oh my god, a Quentin Tarantino Star Trek. And yeah. I'm like, and then when I thought about it, I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> Because like, and if you go on YouTube, there is an interview where he talks about how he would want to do a Star Trek movie and what he would want to do, and he goes into and in that interview, you can tell he knows his Star Trek. Oh, of course, it's Tarantino. Yeah. Tarantino, yeah, of course, he yeah. just sits there and just freaking researches uh, and reads and reads yeah. and reads. He knows everything about anything. Yeah, Quentin I still remember one of the greatest things that. Uh, yeah. Uh, that he, I, I think, oh no, no, that was Kevin Smith. Never mind. So, never mind. I thought it was, I thought it was Tarantino. That was Kevin Smith, but no. But well, he just well, does. He knows his actors. He knows what they've been in. This, yeah. that, and this. It's crazy. Quentin's my hero, honestly. And I'll tell oh. you this. I told you I had a master's in film studies. I wrote my master's thesis on Quentin. You on Quentin's have. work. 
I mean, yeah. I, I could I could only imagine it was probably pretty easy too, like just because it just there's so much that you could just yeah it was it was and it wasn't like it took me forever. Yeah, I'm to sure. Run. Yeah, I was just saying like it, there's a lot yeah. of information and a lot of yeah. you know stuff you could put in there, but I'm sure yeah it had a, it's uh, yeah. hurdles. Yeah. But uh, okay, and then we got Lewis. We got good old Ooh. Mr. Lewis at Superman zero six twenty one. Hey, Dave, I'm on the East Coast, so I thought I'd get my question now. Hopefully, you're able to address my question here. Here's my question. Okay. Do you think someone will ask Henry his status for Superman, and what do you think Ooh. his reply will be? Um, yeah. Talk somebody about that will. Female. Somebody's got to. If he's going to be at a booth so, you know, for Witcher, the Witcher or a panel, someone's going to ask. I, I mean, I'll say... Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Because, like, and we talked about this before. Like, it's almost a given that someone will. And I'll say this: I mean, with J.J. Abrams coming in to take power, essentially in Warner Brothers, because really, if he's got the clout to be the one to muscle out Sujahara, like he's like look all that power. And honestly, he has the rep. He now has the reputation for being the restorer of franchises. He brought back Mission Impossible. He brought back Star Trek. He brought back Star Wars. He'll bring back Star Wars again. And seriously, Warner Brothers would be a special. It takes a spe- it would take a special kind of stupid to not get on their knees and beg him to take to do Man of Steel too. Yeah, I mean, As- it's uh, it, yeah, it's it's in As- the cards. But yeah, I mean. As- Especially like, and I was talking, I was telling you, I think I told you this several times in the vodka stream, guys, um, just look at Superman flyby JJ Abrams, Superman treatment. Well, a, anyone who says, oh, he would just be nostalgic. No, check out all the news stories. Oh my all this God. He like changed Superman shit. flyby. He was ballsy. He was oh, he so was... ballsy. It made man of steel look safe. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're but, right. Yeah, but and but the other thing, but most, but more importantly, Henry Cavill was the finalist to play Superman for Superman Flyby. They had him do the costume test. Exactly, he now, was there. We see the we saw the images. Yeah, and they ultimately went with Matt Bomer. But Matt Bomer recently dropped that bombshell that it was going to be for Clark and Lois. It was going to be him and Amy Adams. Wow! Amy so he they was, even had Amy Adams too. Yeah. So in other words. JJ and and finally JJ when he brings back franchises he brings back the pre-established cast whenever he can. Now yeah. obviously he couldn't do that with Star Trek because if you're doing an original series well, thing he's still got Spock, he's still got Larry, yeah. Leonard Nimoy. So he brought back. in Spock. Yep, he brought in it, Leonard Nimoy. Exactly. He, I mean, you know what's funny too is like if someone gives shit to that that whole thing and I'm like that was a perfect way to reboot a franchise yeah. like that because it still kept the original franchise alive, yeah. those characters yeah. still had their time, but there was like a time fucking shift and they just yeah. went a different direction. And now it's yeah. like going this direction. And in both his Star Trek yeah. movies, you saw yes. the older Spock, you saw yeah. Leonard Nimoy. And I was yeah. hoping that eventually we'd see a, 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 a William Shatner in there, but I don't yeah. know if that's going to happen so, now, but yeah. And honestly, like, like the JJ verse is essentially a Star Trek Elseworlds. Like JJ and his crew, they emphasize the original timeline is still there. Yeah. And of course, lo and behold, we're getting a Picard series. How awesome is that? That's so great. But yeah. But yeah, but like, and speaking for myself as a Star Trek fan, um, I love, I've loved his the film so far. I even this may be a hot take, but I like into dark Star Trek into darkness more so than do I, I. There's um, a lot. I think the reason why it was just the twist of Khan. Con. People yeah. just just yeah, that that's what did it because yeah. that was very hard to market, and it was I you know I, and I knew I was like it's funny too because my dad is a star uh, diehard Star Trek fan, and when that mm-hmm. movie came out, we bet a, a twelve pack of Corona. I was all I guarantee you that is he con or not? yes, <laughs> yeah. we, I didn't know either. I did not look or anything. I did not. Yeah. I did like research because you know obviously I could have easily done that, but I was like, mm. I just thought I was like, there's no way that that's got to be con. And it was funny too because we went and saw that movie together. And as yeah. the things progressed, and you can see that oh, this guy's kind of superhuman. My dad kept going, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> He's all yeah, and then and just and I love one goes I owe you yeah. twelve pack. There's no way that he's not con now. Yeah, and it, like and that that little pause. He says, "My name is con." Con. Yeah, that pause. That oh. pause. It was like, 
That was JJ effing with us. Seriously. Dude, that was, I mean, I mean, I watched that recently. It was funny too. I watched it at my dad's when I visited. We just put it on. We were get, we were just chilling and just about to get ready to go to a, a family get together. And we had that on and we were just kind of sitting there going. And I just kept thinking, I'm like, this is not as bad as people make it seem. This yeah, is a good fucking not. movie. I yeah. love it. Now, I know by contrast, Star Trek Beyond, I don't hate it, but it's just, it rushes through things way too quickly. I was like, slow down, guys. I want to feel this. Well, you got one of the directors of Fast and the Furious yeah. in there, right? Yeah. That's just not... it's, still, it's like, yeah. Had, it's, like, it's like you have the movie. It's like, I'm watching the movie. It's like, is this on Fast Forward? I got to check this. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it kind of rushed through it. It could have it could have taken a little more time, a little more slower burn. Especially got Idris Elba playing the villain. It's like, come yeah. on, you got to... He did well. I mean, Idris always yeah. does well. I mean, we always love Idris, but yeah, it's fun. But uh, all right, let's move on to that. Uh, to Ryan, seventeen eighty four. He asks, "Okay, doesn't anyone think if they intended for Pattinson's version of uh, BW slash BM, I'm guess I'm guessing Batman. Well, I don't know what BW means. I don't know. To be a young oh Bruce Wayne slash Batman. Bruce Duh. Wayne. Yeah. To be yeah. a young bat." Fleck, they could just uh, use de aging technology, such as, yeah, we've talked about this, like they did in uh, uh, Robert, yeah, Downey. Robert Downey. Um, I mean, in Civil War, honestly, yeah, exactly. I, got, I got to say this um, Go of all the examples you could have provided, that's the worst one. Uh, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I gotta be honest, I gotta be honest, that CGI of young Robert Downey Jr. in Civil War sucks. I mean, look at his mouth. I it mean, does get a little wonky. It makes, it, it's kind it of crazy makes, how Kurt Russell's in uh, Guardians Two yeah. was a lot better. Yeah, yeah. You should, you should have brought. But seriously, look at that guy. Look at that dude's. Look at. Uh, well, you can dude. see like the close up that, that that he provided for us. Both sure. eyes are not the same size. Oh. And, and that, that mouth. The left seriously. eye is bigger than the other eye. And it's like Ugh. seriously, seriously. Henry Cavill's mouth in Justice League looks better than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but 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 regardless, I mean. Even that aside, when they do that de aging stuff, it's only for one scene. Yeah, you can't do it for an entire movie. Not for an entire movie. I mean, now they arguably, um, supposedly, they may or may not have in Nocturnal Animals for Amy's flashbacks, but they didn't. In but frankly, they Tom Ford didn't have to do much work there because Amy Am stopped aging at twenty seven, regardless. <laughs> yeah. But even, uh, yeah, but yeah, even that uh, yeah, again, an entire movie of that, I don't think so. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I've said too. I'm like, you know, oh. this technology has just been used for short bursts. To have an entire movie do that, it's just people. And when it comes to these movies, people got to realize too. And I, I mean, I, I'm sure some people do, but there's multiple companies that work on these VFX. It's not the same VFX company and the same people working on every single shot. It's That's like, correct. hey, you're going to you're going to handle this this scene, you're going to handle this scene. That's why sometimes when you see these big franchise movies, it's like, well, why were the visual effects so good right here but they sucked over here? I mean, it could be multiple reasons, but it also could be that it's two different VFX companies. And why are the and why is the budget so bloated for VF um, 9 times out of 10 is because of the heavy VFX budget. Yep. Yeah. But regardless, I mean, honestly, I just love, you know, I I kind of I, I, I was kind of all for Robert Pattinson being Batman because he looks enough like a young Batfleck to be passable. Seriously. Well, yeah. I mean, I even made that joke. I mean, I know, I know it's a long shot. I'm not saying that it was, and I and I posted cause, just because I had I was scrolling through my feed and I saw that Robert Pattinson like in a tux, black and white, and I was like, yep, that. He passes for a fucking Bruce Wayne. He sure does. And then as I kept scrolling, I, I. Somebody posted or retweeted like Ben Affleck in the '90s, and he had yeah. messy hair, stubble. It wasn't in black and white, but I just took one of them and I made it black and white and just put them side by side, and and I just kind of went. I tweeted it out like, if they wanted to, <laughs> if they wanted to, and honestly, it, 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 people all, would accept it. I think. And seriously, look, um, they do not. Matt, even I'll say this: Matt Reeves does not need to make his no. Batman films a direct prequels to BBS. All he needs to do is make his movies agnostic towards yeah. the canon of BBS. Just don't say, don't do anything that contradicts what happened in BBS and it can fit and I'll be fine. Yeah. 
Yeah, he's got the options. He's gonna. I mean, yeah. who knows? I, we just got to be patient. You just never yeah. know. But I just saw those two images because, you know, you had a '90s Ben Affleck image with messy hair, and of course in stubble, yeah. and then Robert Pattinson. And then <laughs> some people were like, I, ha- I had responses like, "Oh my God, look at that!" And then I had some people just go, "It's not gonna happen. Shut up!" And I'm like, "Come on, I'm. It's. I'm not saying it is. Relax." Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, people. Anyways, and then we got, uh, okay, so we got DCEU Fandom 84, 87, sorry. He okay. said, how optimistic are you that fl- the Flash movie will actually happen? Thor will have as many movies as there have been directors for it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Ain't that the okay. truth? All right. I think I have a lot of hope, and I'll tell you why. Yes, there was a lot of changeover with the Flash directors, but who was that under? Yeah. Sujahara? Emmerich, mm-hmm. Berg, and Ball Cap. <laughs> yeah. I love that you call him Ball And Yeah. Hey, I believe hey, you call, hey. you're, you're a master coming up with names. I know. I'm the one that I say. The guy with the... Because I, like, I don't like to say the name. I just say the guy with the ball cap. <laughs> yeah, ball. Yeah, but anyway, ball cap. But it's... But it's <laughs> yeah, and, and, and they keep, you know, imposing... Uh, all these changes like get in line and all that and then and then and then seth graham smith and rick fukunawa is like heck with you so <laughs> fun and, fact seth, seth graham smith blocked me on twitter anyways go ahead wow you do? <laughs> yeah. no you he do? just was uh when he was he was being kind of a little biatch about <gasps> the uh the, the ghostbusters uh reboot yeah and he flat out was like why do you guys keep saying it's a franchise? There's only been two movies. And I'm like, do you not know what a franchise is? And I, and I oh. sent him the definition of a franchise and he blocked Max, me. <laughs> Max don't care about your feelings. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. was like, hey, yes. you know what? A fr- I mean, it's not just two movies. It's cartoons, well, it's books, it's comic well, books. It's, it's fucking figurines. I have a, I have a fucking crate somewhere in my mom's garage full of Ghostbusters yeah. toys. It's like, come I'll on. Tell you this. But he blocked well, me like right after well, that. Well, let me ask you this. Have you been banned from posting comments on Heroic Hollywood like me? <laughs> no, but they blocked me to on this, Twitter. Well, I'll tell you this. I To so this day, Scooby I, I, yeah, Scooby Pants. To this day, I have no idea what I did. Like, <laughs> it it's, it's, it's like you have been banned from posting on Heroic Hollywood. It's like, what did I do? Did I post? Yeah. Do you not like my release of Snack Cut tweets? Well, what is this? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. But But anyway, but I think, look. The DCU is under new management right now, and yeah. Warner Brothers is under new management. And honestly, all they need to do is be actually nicer to their directors and work with them, with them, and not against them. And Hamada has certainly, Hamada and Lee and Saffron have certainly been, have had much better relationships with their filmmakers so far. And they keep bringing in horror filmmakers, and they're doing it quite well. So they're bringing in the it director. There you so, go. Uh, and I know it hasn't been confirmed, but. <laughs> Why do you suppose that is? I mean, you think about it. He's got a movie coming out. Are they going to fucking confirm it before or after the movie? Think about yeah. that, guys. Just Speaking saying. Of it, yeah. And by the way, before we move on, like, I got to say, and look, um, look, I'm one of those. Look, I have not seen the first It yet. I mean, I've been seeing bits and pieces How of it. How dare you? Yeah, whatever. I'm not, I'm not a super horror guy. It's but I'll say this. I, if I, if... Ain't it, I'll say this. Um, everyone is saying that Sophia Lillis is a dead ringer for is like a young Amy Adams dead ringer. And of course, they took advantage of that with sharp objects. Yeah. So um, and so everyone was was stoked for Amy playing um, adult Bev in uh, it chapter two, especially especially with that scene in it chapter one where someone actually tells Bev and I quote. You look just like Lois Lane. Eh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, everyone was saying, "Whoa, these!" She, <laughs> they literally have her say, "You look just like Lois Lane." They were setting up Amy playing her in in chapter two, and they went with Chastain because reasons, I guess. Yeah, she probably threw a fit. Um, yeah, I, but I also wonder, like, did did Amy Adams want the role, or was she too busy? I mean, she's I mean, doing a lot of shit, but who knows? It's not like it's not like she's against she's against being a whore. Supposedly. She was all set to play the heroine in a quiet place, the the mom in a quiet place. Oh wow! But what happened was like em, because like John Krasinski was the male was the lead role, and you married to Emily Blunt, and you know, and you know Amy and Emily Blunt are friends. They yeah. ever since Sunshine Cleaning, so they were at first like Emily wow, Blunt. Wow, that's a deep role. 
And at first, Emily Blunt was saying, hey, why don't you do it? And Amy's like, okay. And then, and then later on, um, Emily says, hey, uh, Amy, uh, I, I'd like to do a film with my husband. And Amy's like, okay. Yeah. And it ended up working out because, I mean, I mean Emily. I would have loved. Now, I would have loved to see, like, Amy in a film where oh, of course. most of the movies she doesn't talk, where most of the movies she doesn't talk in is her reactions and, like, having her <laughs> things. But it would have been interesting. Yeah, but yeah. No, 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 no. Where she, no, no, no. It's like usually it, just seeing her act with everything but her voice, but she's got a great voice, but still. Okay. It would be interesting. So I went to pervert her out. You just wanted to hear her make, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's see, okay. I want to see her face. I want to see, like, how her like, reaction, like, how she can. Like I wanted to see her do like how she can act without talking. That that would be very very interesting to see. Like because there's some excellent acting in that movie. Some of the best ever. Like if you have to act without your without relying on your voice, that's you that's a, do that yeah. well. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Should have got nominated. Um, let's yeah. move on here. We got Fury Firestorm. He said, in BBS, why do you think it took Soup so long to get to the Kryptonian ship after the fight with Batman? Uh, yeah. Dark ma deleted material, oversight, had a, had to get a power refill from the sun. He had to uh, take a super dump. <laughs> that could you know, have been it. Funny. You know, it's funny because... Um, at first, when I like looked at that question on Twitter and all that, when I was getting prepared, like at first I was thinking, well, gee, I mean, they just cut to what Batman was doing, and then afterwards cut to what Superman was doing, and then or was no, that couldn't be it because Lex calls up KG Beast, and then there's Batfleck on the other end of the line. But so it couldn't be that. But so then, it had to take the time for him yeah. to fight twenty three guys. Yeah, but the question is, how long did it take for Batman to uh, show up at the warehouse and then take on the guys? That well, too shouldn't take that long because I'm Batman. Exactly. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, but it'll, uh, but I guess like you could say, look, he's he needs look, he's weakened because of all that kryptonite exposure. Mm -hmm. So I guess he had to like, but so like as he's flying over there like he's he's doing it slower cuz like he can't do it at full speed i guess maybe i don't know yeah That's i mean who knows maybe there was a scene cut out that showed that where he was struggling i mean we know there was a scene where he was looking for his mom and all he heard was just like the cries out on people but apparently it was cut for being too haunting or something like that it's so like why is superman saving all these people he's so selfish yeah. Yeah. Oh, chase people mm -hmm. All right, then we got uh, Matt Mago 77 He said, <clears throat> why do you think the Snyder Cut is discussed more and has oh, more attention yeah. than the Ayer Cut? Because, yeah. it's, because it's Justice League. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. There's Suicide Squad was a, was, a, was a hit. It yes. was a hit, you know? People, yeah. it's a cultural hit. People yeah. loved it, and yeah. it made a lot of money, and yeah. people were like, yeah, maybe they wanted to see more Jared Leto, but they didn't care as much. And there's also there's also the important distinction that it wasn't they didn't that Warner Brothers did not bring in another director to do those reshoots. True that. It was David him it was Air himself who did those reshoots. Did the reshoots and, and did the cuts and yeah. Yeah, well, trailer yeah, supposedly Trailer Park did those cuts which which is yeah. why it feels like a 2-hour trailer, like a movie length trailer. Yeah. But but um but also not only that, he did all the reshoots but he also was part of the publicity door and was saying, hey, you know, it's my film, it's my film, blah, 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 blah. So as a result, that kind of downplayed any effort towards, towards like there being a big push for the air cut. Yeah. Because it just, yeah. it, it seems like a complete movie. You yeah. know, Justice League, you watch that, it's like, God, you could just yeah. see the Frankenstein in it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's so it's just, tough. it's just such a mess. Yeah. And it's because the same because it, the difference is in with Suicide Squad, yeah. the same director, mm -hmm. the same director did the reshoots. Yep. And so as a result, it's still his style. Now, it may be lesser, it may be more like for, humorous, like more lighthearted, but you know, it's it's the same director. It's still the same director. Yeah. It's all right, Matt. Yeah. Once we uh, once we get the Snyder cut, then we're gonna put all our efforts into the air cut. That's what's gonna happen. Hopefully. <laughs> all right. All right. Then finally we have Karan at Painter <laughs> of Comics. He said in the original Justice League script, 
which mm-hmm. Zach was part of. What was the role played by Joe Mignola's Deathstroke? What did his character have to do in that? And then he That's asked, funny. did his role shift when Joss Whedon got attached to the Justice League film? Well, it's interesting because, you know, it's like Fabian Wagner was posting those behind the scenes shots of, um, of, lo and behold, the original, all right, stop jerking around Luthor scene. Yeah. And I posted a theory says, hey, you know, and I, I was sort of basing it off of, and I, I am what Ramesh was doing some little fan art. And it's like, what if, Everything in that one scene was Zach, except for the very last shot where there's this reveal that it's a fake Luthor. It's a fake guy, a guy who's in there taking Luthor's place, and he happened to be bald, and he did that cackle or whatever. What yeah. if that one shot was Whedon, who replaced the rest of the scene because two-hour runtime? But really, but in reality, the, the shot, like, after he says, oh, stop jerking around, Luthor, what are you doing? He get, the guard goes into the cell, and there's death. And Deathstroke steps out of the shadows and whacks him. <laughs> oh, that'd be beautiful. That'd be a beautiful scene. That definitely yeah. would be. Yeah, I yeah, like it. Like, yeah, I mean, certainly according to uh, certainly according to a Kevin Smith's rundown, there was like a, a breakout sequence. And yeah. Like, well, I've I've kind of been vocal about that because I know yeah. about that, and yeah. I'll just say it right here. It's like there's. Okay, just imagine in BVS. Remember when Batman breaks into LexCorp? Okay, uh, I remember yeah. when I when I saw the theatrical cut. I was kind of upset that I didn't get to see that because I was like, "Oh, that would have been badass." Batman <clears throat> breaking into LexCorp. We just saw the aftermath. What the fuck? But yeah. in the ultimate cut, we got to see just a little bit of footage, just yeah. enough, just enough to give me a just <clears throat> to satisfy me, just to quench yeah. that thirst. A beautiful shot. Of the you know the camera, and then he just swoops down and yeah. just lifts that guy up in such a Batman way, the most Batman yeah. Batman thing I've ever seen on on film. So that, that was like that that worked for me. So just think yeah. about that with Death yeah. Deathstroke. So there's that, and of, and of course the very last shot of Luthor, the extreme close up. We know that that extreme close up is was Whedon. Oh, now, of again, all that dialogue of his was. So they talked about and also, shit. Yeah, and also pay attention to the editing in those final moments. Yeah, I don't like know. after, yeah, because like after, um, Slade takes off his helmet, says we need to level the playing field, Mister Wilson. It cuts to Lex to put it plainly, and then in the middle of that sentence, it cuts to Deathstroke like reacting, like his head snaps up and he looks shocked. But why is he? Why is he looking shocked when all Lex said was? We have to level the playing field to put it plainly, and then his head snaps up. Like, why? No, because Joss Whedon moved that shot into the middle of his sentence in order to cover up the reshoot. Yeah. Because that one moment, that one half of a line where he says, shouldn't we have a league of our own? That was what Joss did. It was like to set up the whole Legion of Doom thing. But and of course, the generally accepted theory is that it was going to be one shot of the entire line of Lex saying, to put it plainly, I need you to kill the Batman. And there then it cuts know. to Slade, and uh, then it cuts know. to Slade looking shocked. Reacting. Yeah. Yeah. To him reacting. Yep. Oh, yeah. There it makes I sense. Think you got it there. Yeah, I mean, uh, don't 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 get too hyped about like seeing an actual full on scene of Deathstroke breaking out Lex. I know how awesome that sounds, but it's probably just going to be something that you overhear and maybe see a piece of footage or something. Like, like I said, it's similar to to Batman breaking in Lex Corp. You didn't get to see that. You saw the aftermath and just a little piece of footage just to satisfy you. Think about that with the breaking out of Lex and Deathstroke. Yeah. That's what I that's what I'm telling people. That's what I was told. So there you go. Yeah. So there you go, guys. I think uh, yeah. I think we're gonna wrap it up here, man. We've been talking for like over an hour and a half, hour and forty. Yeah. I mean, is this is this like the longest film junkie podcast you've had, or is it? Uh, or is it... I don't know. It's probably pretty close. I mean, anytime I have a guest on, it seems it go it does run longer. So it, it very well could be. This... I have to like check out the run. Just, I'll just say this, everyone listening in. This is why I usually talk fast in these podcasts, so it doesn't take this long. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, because I because I have a lot to say. And, He's got you know, a lot I, to say. He's got to get to it. 
Yeah, and I, I do it rapidly, use out of courtesy to the people who want don't want it to be that long. Yeah. So wow. you're this welcome. Great. So you're, nice. Absolutely so great. Is, man. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. We'll do it again. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Congratulations on all the uh, the good stuff that's happening with Project Comic Con. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, promote promote yourself, promote the uh, the, the the project and sure. everything. All right. Well, I'll just say on Friday, not only is the banner coming in. But also, apparently, that's when the Hollywood Reporter's double-length Comic-Con special comes out with our half-page color ad. There you go. Yes, sir. It's going to be a good day. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be over there somewhere doing something. Yeah, Yeah, we'll see you. Oh, yeah. uh, which is more than I can say for myself. Sorry, money. I know, I know. You couldn't make it over. It's fine. It's all right. you You got boots on the ground. I'm going to be doing like a probably like a man on the street kind of thing. Just uh, <laughs> seeing what people think about the Snyder cut and stuff. So, all right, well, all right guys. guys. So I uh, appreciate you clicking in and like uh, make sure you follow me on all the uh, sock meds right under there. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Patreon. If you want to help out the pirates ship. And of course, I got shirts and everything down below. All right, guys. We will talk to you later. Peace.